Hi there. In this demo, we're going to be seeing how Stratchform can be used to replace a bad node in a Cassandra cluster with a new node. We have the UI in front of us and the actions page is loaded. We also filtered all the actions that belong to the Cassandra pack. First thing we want to do is to see what is the status of the cluster. For that, we're going to be running the Stratchform action Cassandra node tool. This is simply a wrapper around the Cassandra node tool utility. The first command we want to run is node tool status, and we want to run this against the healthy Cassandra node. So let's go ahead, plug the parameters, run the action, and you see the action is being run by Stackstorm. Stackstorm actually has SSH access to the Cassandra boxes. The action completed, and here is the output of the node tool status action. As you can see, the Cassandra cluster is a three node cluster. One of the node is actually down and we would be replacing that bad node with a new node. Let's actually take a look at how the replace host workflow looks. First, we would be seeing infrastructure as code, the YAML definition. Basically, you can correlate this against the runbook provided by Datastax for replace host. The runbook basically is a six step process that lists what are all the actions that need to happen on the new node to replace the old Node. We codified all those steps as individual Stockstorm actions. Now these are auditable. We also provided hookups to your favorite chat client. In our case, it is Slack. This is what we call chat ops, where you can visualize all these actions that are happening real time and the status of each of those actions. This is sweet, but wouldn't it be cool if we had a way to visualize the workflow itself? We have a way for you. Let's hit the edit button. This opens our brand new flow product where you can actually see the visual representation of the workflow in the palette and the code representation on the right hand side. As you can see, first we detect if a node is a seed node. If so, then for demo purposes, we don't handle that case, but it is fairly trivial to extend that to handle seed node replacements as well. If it is not a seed node, then we go ahead and spin a VM using the create VM workflow. Let's also take a moment to understand that each of the actions in a workflow could be workflows themselves. So this is a cool paradigm and it will help us write complex workflows for complex tasks. And we also see the Slack exposures here. Basically what this workflow does is spin a VM, deploy Cassandra on it, if Cassandra is running, then it stops Cassandra, clears data from Warlib Cassandra folder, sets some JVM options like replace address equals address of the dead host, and then starts Cassandra, notifies on Slack that the replacement process has actually started, and then wait for read ports to open. So this is an important task. This actually signifies that uh, when the node peer recovered and got all its data from its peers, only then reports are bound to. We detect that case uh, to signify end of replacement process. If it fails, then we notify on Slack. If it succeeds, then we re remove all the JVM options we replaced on the box and then notify on Slack that the workflow actually completed. And you can also add actions from within the flow product and connect them. And you can also edit the code to add new things or edit existing things. For example, you could go ahead and add a on error task here. This is actually pretty neat to edit the workflow from the flow product. Okay, now let's get back to the main UI and let's kick off the replace host workflow. Before doing that, let's also take a moment to look at what rules are. Rules are a way to connect events to actions or workflows. We have a replace host, replace dead host rule here, which is already selected. So let's look at the YAML definition. Again, I wanna take a moment to emphasize this is infrastructure as code. So what you're seeing here is a trigger, which is a webhook trigger in this case. We are listening to a relative URL, Cassandra slash events. And what we are looking for is a payload body that contains this pattern. So basically we detect if the payload contains cast node down. And we actually take the dead node's IP from the webhook 
and we actually supply the replacement host here and kick off the workflow. Well, if you have console integration, you don't have to hot code these parameters, but for the simplicity of the demo, we actually use hot coded parameters here. So rules are the way to connect events to workflows. And for the demo purposes, I have disabled this role, so the replace force does not happen automatically. And it will also give me a chance for me to show you how this replace workflow is kicked off from the UI. I already have run this action before, so I'm just going to actually rerun. You supply the dead node, you just supply the healthy node, and you supply the replace mode node parameter, and you click, click run. So the workflow is now running. And you could actually see a real-time update of what are all the tasks that are running and what are output it produced. For example, here is the output. And we also have shard ops exposure. Let's wait for uh, the workflow to actually notify us to say the replacement workflow actually started. Let's switch back to the UI. So here, the notify replace host workflow task ran, which would have notified us on Slack that the replacement workflow started. And now the node is actually recovering. It will take a few minutes for the node to peer recover and notify us that this entire operation is complete. So here you can see from my previous run of the demo that we got a notification. So this is actually pretty sweet. This is how we do auto remediation for Cassandra cluster. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please free to feel free to tweet at us or contact us on our Slack community. We'll be more than happy to answer your questions and help you auto remediate more use cases. Thank you.